multitasking. There was a, a study that was done at Harvard in uh, 2008, and so remember that was really uh, at the beginning of the Great Recession. Um, and that study showed that almost half of professionals, which includes leaders, worked more than 65 hours a week. It probably is not surprising to most of you watching this. Um, and I would imagine uh, that that trend has gotten worse because the economy has obviously tightened up. And during the recession, a lot of, uh, a lot of companies were put in a position where they had to lay people off or at the very least uh, lose enough resources that uh, it became incumbent upon folks to uh, put in more time. Um, might even have to take on the responsibilities of people who had left. Um, and so multitasking, uh, although it's been around for a long time, uh, I would imagine, uh, in the last uh, several years, I think it's probably taken on a life of its own. Uh, and we, there's even, I would say, kind of a cottage industry that teaches you how to be a better multitasker. Um, on, un, not surprisingly, I'm, I'm here to tell you that uh, I'm going to try to steer you away from that. That's at, at Mindful Solutions, we, we know and we've seen the research that shows that um, multitasking is not a good thing. It doesn't help you become a better leader. And in fact, it, it makes you a worse leader. Um, one of the more startling pieces of research that's been done about multitasking is that it, it, it increases the amount of time it takes to finish one task by 25%. So you may think that you're getting a lot done because you're, you're, you're juggling a lot of things at the same time, but in, but in fact, it's actually taking you longer to complete it. And oh, by the way, the number of errors that you make when you're multitasking goes up as well. And so, and let, you know, lest you think I've forgotten my, my lawyer friends who, uh, you know, their, their revenue is based on a kind of more of a billable hours um, uh, re uh, income model uh, and, and other, other professions as well, not just lawyers. But, uh, you know, if you work 100 hours in a week in order to, to bill that much, the, the problem is that there are soft costs involved. Um, including kind of the ineffectiveness of the work and, and the poor quality of the work as demonstrated by the statistics that I just quoted. Um, so you can, you can really knock up those number of hours, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing a good job. So multitasking has the opposite effect. It, it reduces productivity. And worse than that, it actually feeds on itself because we, we actually become less productive the more that we multitask. And so what happens? As we become less productive, we feel like we need to multitask even more so that we can try to catch up. So you can see how it, how it does feed on itself. You know, you, you, I remember being able to kind of go into the office on Saturday and, uh, and catch up on stuff that I didn't get done during the, the week. Uh, of course, that was before uh, smartphones and uh, all the ways to get in touch with somebody today. Uh, God help you if you tell somebody that you're going into the office on a, on a Saturday to catch up because you won't get anything done. Everybody will be messaging you, texting you, calling you, whatever. The other thing about multitasking is that it's, it's actually somewhat addicting. Okay? We get this emotional boost if you think about when you're multitasking, as stressful as it can be, we also feel like we're on a roll. Look at all these things that we're, we're getting done. We get hyped up about it. And the problem is, is that we get so kind of narrowly focused on getting these things done, uh, multiple things done in a short amount of time, that it, it has an effect on our ability to make good decisions. Um, we're, because we're in such a rush and we, we are so singularly focused. And so we tend to make impulsive judgments when we're multitasking. Um, 
you know, somebody needs a decision about something and you're trying to get a bunch of things done, you don't have time to, in your head, you don't have time to really think things out and get the right input from the right people and look at the pros and cons and so you're more likely to make an impulsive judgment just to make it go away. Um, you become less flexible about what somebody could or could not do in a situation. Um, you get less creative. Creativity takes time. It takes some space in order to uh, be creative, but creativity is really what pushes our organizations forward and makes us more competitive and kind of defines uh, where we are in the marketplace. And, but when we're constantly multitasking, it, I mean, the, the root of multitasking is task, right? So we're focused on all these tasks and not on the creativity it takes to really be a leader in an organization. We also, if, and I know you, you've probably thought about this already, when you're multitasking, don't you get more frustrated? Because your mind is usually thinking about, while you're working on one thing, it's thinking about the other thing, or the third thing, or however many you're juggling when you're trying to multitask. Or it may be, I've got these other things that I have to do this afternoon, and I need to make sure that I get all these things done this morning, or I'm not going to be able to do this thing in the afternoon. So there's, there's a lot of frustration that uh, goes along with multitasking. And it can even get you can even get carried away with that, right? I mean, if you're trying to get a bunch of things done at the same time and somehow that process gets interrupted, it, you, I mean, you can get downright hostile. And, and that's not obviously, a, it's not a, a, a trait that we want to have associated with us as leaders. So those of us in the mindfulness business, um, and I, I don't take credit for this, certainly, um, I believe it was Mirabai Bush who was responsible for initially setting up the uh, mindfulness training program at Google, and uh, she works closely with uh, uh, Daniel Goleman, who's the uh, originator of emotional intelligence. They love the phrase, uh, referring to multitasking, they love the phrase continuous partial attention, which I think is brilliant, right? I mean, that's that truly is what we're doing. We're, we're paying attention, but it's only partial. Because our minds, while our minds are working on one thing, we're also thinking about something else. And the example that I give to a lot of people is that it's like, it's as if you, before you left the office, that somebody had you doing a, a shot of tequila before you got in your car. Nobody would do that, right? But it truly impairs your judgment every bit as much as, you know, having a shot before you drive home. It's crazy. Nobody would do that. And, but that's, that's exactly the same kind of effect that multitasking has on our brains. But we continue to pretend that it's this talent that we want our leaders to have. Um, it, 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 the research just simply does not support that. The other, another problem with multitasking is that if, if, when you're trying to do a lot of things and you just don't stop, right? You're going and going and going and trying to juggle and you, know, you got all spinning all these plates in the air. Uh, you, you don't get a chance to replenish, right? We as human beings have this reservoir of energy, if you will, and and it depletes quicker when you're multitasking. You're, you're tapping into that energy supply and depleting it faster. And so what happens? When, when your energy starts to run out, what happens? Well, again, your, your frustration levels rise. There's a much greater chance of conflict in, in the workplace between you and somebody else. Stress levels go up. You become less innovative. I mean, in general, you just start to burn out. Right? So a case can absolutely can be made that multitasking, chronic multitasking, can lead to higher burnout. I don't, I, I'd be surprised if that surprised you uh, because it's a very stressful uh, situation to be in constantly. And when you think about it, actually, we're incapable of doing more than one thing at a time. So what what we think of multitasking as being is not doing two things 
at the same time, but doing one thing and flipping back and forth to something else for very short periods of, of time. And what happens in those very short periods of time is that we're, we're not fully focused on any of them. It's all about that, that movement back and forth. It's much better to have a period of very strong focus and then follow that up with a, with a period of, a short period of real renewal before you move on to the next area of focus, but really separating them out and not feeling like you're juggling things. I'm going to do this for this amount of time, and then I'm going to move to this for this amount of time. And in between, if need be, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take two minutes and just, you know, chill out for, for a couple minutes. That allows your energy reservoir, again, I'll use that phrase, to to replenish a little bit, and you're not, you're not draining that reservoir and, and burning out as quickly. What Mindful Solutions is here to help you with is to uh, find those ways to stay focused and recover from distractions uh, more quickly. And we've got workshops and, and webinars that will help you as a leader to stay focused on one thing at a time. And, you know, we've got a, a, couple of, a couple of them, one is on uh, how, I, it's called How to Grow Patience. And that's a, that's a real trick, and, and, and I use that term purposely, growing patience. There is a way to become a more patient person, and one of our workshops and webinars teaches that. Uh, another one is on uh, calming our monkey minds. Uh, which is a wonderful phrase about how our minds jump from place to place, and isn't that what happens uh, in multitasking? Our brains are forever moving back and forth, and most of us do struggle with how to stay focused. That's what mindfulness is. It's staying, it's paying attention to the present moment and doing it very purposely, and doing it without judging ourselves and beating ourselves up when we when we say we're we're not getting everything done that we want to get done. So again, we've, Mindful Solutions has a workshop that's dedicated to, so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the monkey mind? And for those of you that maybe have trouble sleeping when you lay down at night and your mind is still racing a million miles an hour, this is, this is the kind of workshop that would, would be helpful to you. So I hope you'll uh, check them out and uh, go to our store page and you'll see all the options that are available to you.